Yeah, I talk to God at the crib. I don't really like to go to church. Welcome to my channel. This is Dumak. I do reviews and reactions, and I'm going to be talking about Samsung Galaxy S20 FE and comparing it to Samsung Galaxy Note 9 that I've been using for two years. So let's get into it. I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible. So I'm going to break down a couple specs. Not everything, just a couple key areas. So with the Note 9, you have, um, I think a 6.3, 6 6.5 inch AMOLED display, Super AMOLED, and it is a 2K display. It is a 60 hertz panel from two years ago. It still looks great up till now. Um, no screen burning, nothing too serious on that. At the back of the phone, you have your fingerprint scanner and two cameras. You have your 12 megapixel main camera and you have your two times telephoto. It has a uh, fingerprint scanner I already mentioned that but it has the heart rate sensor I think blood oxygen and I'm not really too sure what else is in there but it has you know the, the whole S health sensor in there and you have your flash it's made of glass and metal as we all know and you still have your LED flash and guess what you have down here a headphone jack beautiful no problems except for one key area which I'll mention soon six gigs of RAM 128 gigs of internal storage it's expandable up to about 512 or one terabyte I'm not really sure in some markets there's a 256 version or a 512 version I think and that has eight gigs of RAM somewhere out there in the world you guys whoever got those very lucky it's built like a tank it still feels premium till this day it feels it still feels great and yes you have an iris scanner which is still trying to detect my face for secure unlocking it has so many good features it is a great phone i still love it and because of how good it is i haven't upgraded yet then you have the S20 FE, which is the cheapest phone that Samsung, with cheapest flagship, let me let me make that clear, cheapest flagship that Samsung has released in 2020. It's made of a polycarbonate back, which they call plastic. It has an aluminum frame that goes around it. It has triple cameras at the back and a single LED flash. It has a pinhole camera. If you want these, if you want the image that I use for the wallpaper, I drew it myself on my tab at six. Please mention if you want it in the comments and I'll make it available for download. It has a 1080p screen and it has a AMOLED display. It has a fingerprint scanner in the front, which is a optical fingerprint scanner which is actually very reliable and more reliable than the fingerprint scanner in my Tab S6, which is an ultrasonic. It has 120 hertz. So now that we got all that out of the way, that's not all the specs, of course. I didn't even mention that this has the S Pen, but yes, it has it, and I've used that to draw quite a few things on this phone, which... Um, is one of the key reasons why I love note devices. So, uh, people would ask, should you upgrade or not? That is very subjective. So I'm going to mention certain things that one has that the other doesn't or vice versa. And I'm going to talk about certain things that are my gripes with either one of them and pros for the other or whatever. All right. So, when it comes to the S20 FE, obviously it has a newer processor, 128 gigs of storage, which is the same as this, 
So that's not much of an upgrade anyway. Um, the 120, 120 hertz display does make a difference when you uh, factor in the fact that it also has a Note processor. So it's faster and smoother than the Note. It has the same amount of RAM as the Note does. And it has better cameras. The build though, you will notice that the build feels a lot more sturdy on the Note 9. When you hold it in your hand, it feels a lot more sturdy. It feels a lot more solid and reassuring to hold. Some people will say it feels good in the hand. Ladies, you know the procedures. Shout out to Flossy Carter. When you hold um, the S20 FE, it doesn't feel like it's not a premium phone. On the contrary, it does. And I like the feel of the the satin feel at the back. It feels nice. But the way it's put together, I don't. I just can't put my fingers on it. You will notice that it feels less sturdy and less well built. I don't want to use the word premium. It feel this feels like it's worth the money that you paid for it. I paid nothing for this, so it feels worth the money you pay for it. The buttons are less clicky though. I will say that the buttons aren't quite. It seems more flush to the to the frame, so it doesn't feel quite as satisfying and reassuring as the Note does. But then again, you're probably gonna use a case on your phone anyway, so that kind of negates the whole feel in the hand thing, because then it really depends on what kind of case you use. Then apart from that. The cameras on the Note are not quite as good as these ones are. The, you get more clarity. The pictures look better. The dynamic range is better. There are more videos on that subject on other channels. But if you want me to do a little comprehensive test and go out and shoot in the frozen tundra outside, I'll do that and then I'll put it up. So let me know in the comment section below if you want to see something like that. The cameras are not bad on the Note. They're actually pretty good. They still hold up. The thing is, do you want the best cameras? If you do, then you might not even want any of these devices. There are other devices with better cameras in certain areas. However, the, both cameras are great. Um, there's no autofocus on the camera on the S20 FE. However, I'm not really sure if there is on the Note either. The Note has a more secure biometric system in the front. You have face unlock here and it works all the time. All the time. So far as you can line your face up with it, it works all the time. It is very accurate. I can't, I'm behind the camera so it's not really quite, quite showing. And this is in a wide angle camera, so uh, I can't really dis show it to you, but I can show you that the fingerprint accurate works 100% of the time. The only problem is you can't just like tap it and go like you can on the note. So when you turn it around, this is the uh, embedded physical fingerprint scanner, and you don't even need to uh, leave your finger on it for a long time, you just need to tap it. And then that's it. There you go. There you go. There you go. So you just need to tap it and it goes. So far as you hold it the right way, you tap it, you go. No fuss, no muss. And then the face. I will say that the iris scanner and the, the facial recognition is slow on the note. Cause remarkably slow. To the point where I don't use it most of the time, except for in niche certain uh, circumstances. It's incredibly fast here, but not as secure. So, take it as you will. One thing that people take for granted that the Note has, that the new phones all don't have, is the headphone jack. 
that little part right over here. If you can see it, let me get that in focus. There you go. The headphone jack. That port is absent here, which would have been a really nice addition. It would have uh, been nice to have it here. But unfortunately, for some reason, they just left it out. And that is uh, sad because there's still a lot of niche circumstances, not even niche circumstances. There are day-to-day -day circumstances where... You'll be in a car, maybe with your friends or whatever, and, and they pass you the aux cord, or you want to use the aux cord, and you don't have a dongle, and they might not have Bluetooth in their car. So in those circumstances, those one-off circumstances, it's frustrating that a port as simple as that and as essential as that, because they still put that on all the computers that come out. You, you buy a desktop, it's on there. You buy headphones... Most headphones still have it on them. I'm not talking about ear in ear earbuds or the little earbuds. I mean, like big headphones, quality headphones, still have the port because the port is essential. I don't. The real reason we all really know the real reason why they don't put the headphone jack on phones anymore is to drive up sales for wireless earbuds. Same reason why they don't put chargers in the box of some phones or even headphones. To, let me even mention that this phone does not come with headphones on the box. And it's... I know that we all don't really... Most of us don't use those headphones, but it's kind of ludicrous. If you really want to save the environment, there are way more actual means of accomplishing that. I'm sorry for how smudgy this screen looks. There are way more realistic methods of doing that than not putting headphones in the box you could use different materials for the headphones or you could bundle the usb i mean uh, the bluetooth headphones in there for free but they won't do that anyway so um i've mentioned a few things and let me mention one a couple things that i would like to see in version 2 of this before I, I talk about upgrades. In version 2, stronger glass. That would be nice because the glass on here is from 2014. It's Gorilla Glass 3. Weaker than the Gorilla Glass on the Note 9, which I believe is Gorilla Glass 5, I think. Um, probably 5. So, that is a concern for me because this phone has cracked within the two years I used it and I needed to go and change the, 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 the display on it and it cracked again. So that never happened with my Note 8, however, so I'd like to mention that, but I only had that for a year. I've had this for two years. That is something you might want to consider. So that's something of concern. And that's something where if a more expensive device has better glass, it might be worth the money because it's an investment you're making. Next, um, I would like the buttons to be a little bit more clicky in the next version and for them to add a headphone jack. These are the main things, but these could be considered as, as nitpicks. They're not really a deal breaker for most people. I think that... If you're moving from this to this, the only real thing that you're going to miss out is on this right here, the S Pen. I use it to draw. I design with it. It's essential. That's why I still have my SIM card in this phone and not in this one. It's been very hard for me to put it in there. But... To say all that doesn't mean that there's not certain things that are concerning. Because with this one right here, I got the update for One UI 2.5 just today, the same day I'm filming this. And that's basically the last major update it's going to get. This is going to get three more updates, all the way up to Android 13. It's sad. Um, there is a discussion to be had. 
about the longevity of Samsung devices in terms of updates. I've mentioned it before. It's um it's pathetic because um you could go, I I have an iPhone 8 plus. I updated it to iOS 14. Point something 14.2 or whatever. That phone came out the year before this one did if I'm not mistaken. And it's still getting updates. And it will still continue to get updates for a very, very long time. For about five years on average. Now, I'm not going to bash on something and say that they don't give general updates. Like, security. when it comes to security patches, the friggin' S5 got a security patch, I think, last year. That's That's pretty good. That's amazing. But that's because security patches should be coming... To your phone because if I have a viable phone that still works, I should still kind of qualify for a security patch if you ask me. But if I'm paying the same amount of money as the iOS guys for a device and you're telling me that the device is um the the device is just as good or better than the iOS device and you don't update it, it kind of makes it seem like you don't believe in your own device. But that's a discussion for a different video. Three years of security updates. If you don't use the S Pen, you don't, um, and, but basically that's, and you don't mind a downgrade in the screen sharpness because you will notice, I notice at least, and I feel that people will notice. I, pe I feel like when people say that you won't notice, I feel that they're they're not really being a hundred percent true to themselves. However, uh, I will mention one thing. I I when I needed to get more battery life out of this device, I ran it at seven twenty p and didn't notice for a little bit. But then when I did notice, I noticed in a big way. So you can take that for whatever you will. But whenever I move from this device back to this, I use them back and forth. I do notice that the there's just a little bit less sharpness in this display right here. And it has a little bit less vibrancy, but that doesn't bother. The vibrance, not really a big problem. Speakers, both are excellent. The thing is, if you can still use this device, knowing that you're not going to get updates afterwards there really might not be a need to upgrade but then then again um there are other options out there and there's the note 10 but if you don't have the note 10 by now it's probably because you didn't feel it was a worthy purchase or it was too expensive if it was too expensive then you can find it out like online for great deals um depending on what country you're in here in canada I've seen it at like six hundred dollars before. You can buy a second hand version for around that amount. You can upgrade that way if you feel you're so inclined to. And I think that and that upgrade is even more compelling in a lot of ways than the Note Twenty Ultra is. But that's another discussion for another day. So if you're use you were using a Note Nine like I was for two years and you're wondering if this is a good option, I think it's a good option. But remember the screen, the display, not not this the the glass on the display is not as good as this one right here. So that is a concern. The plastic build is going to feel a little bit less sturdy. So that's a concern. The buttons are a little bit less clicky. Not much of a concern to me. The face unlock is not as secure. And there's no headphone jack. If you can if you can stomach all of that, this right here is, is good because the performance you get out of this, the gaming on this. If you want to see a video of me gaming on this, I, I'll, I'll gladly do it. It is incredible. The 120 hertz display is incredible. The fingerprint scanner on the front, I like it. 
the another thing you're gonna miss out is also the LED flash. I should have mentioned that, but what take that for what you, what you will. I don't want this video to get so long. Um, I'll do a full video talking about this in detail, but I just wanted to put this out there into the universe. So please, if you liked this video and uh, you want to see more, uh, like it, and subscribe, and please consider leaving a comment. I will take any and any uh, comments and criticisms into consideration. Let's have a nice, healthy discussion about whatever in the comments. Have yourself a wonderful day. God bless and stay tuned.